Okay. Hi everybody. Uh, just got in a brand new motherboard, uh, Gigabyte's uh, P67A UD7B3 revision. So, uh, I've been waiting and the customers have been waiting for this motherboard for quite a while. And now, now I can see why it was delayed. Uh, Gigabyte is a company that really prides themselves on uh, dependability and reliability. And so, um, it seems like they actually printed a brand new box for the B3 stepping. So as all of you uh, may or may not have heard that uh, all the 1155 motherboards were recalled because of a, a SATA 2 uh, problems, right? Well, to make sure that you weren't getting a generic or a uh, uh, some you know or a knockoff or something, it seems like they have reprinted uh, the packaging with B3 stepping, foil printed and everything on here. So. Uh, Basically, what we have on the box is, you know, that's very important. I'm glad they did that. Uh, the box is actually foil printed and it's pretty heavy. And again, this is uh, supporting the 1155 uh, chipset, the Sandy Bridge CPUs. And um, what we have here is, and what's really um, desirable about this motherboard is that um, it has precise uh, power management, a 24 phase uh, uh, power design here. So. Pretty, uh, it's uh, the VRM uh, design actually. And then, um, what's really nice about Gigabyte is that they also have uh, dual BIOS. So, uh, if one of your BIOS were to corrupt, you have another one to back it up. Uh, let's see, we also have here dual uh, layer copper PCB construction, which is uh, technically it will allow for better <coughs> you know, energy flow and lower temperatures, theoretically higher overclock rates. I have USB 3.0, USB 3X power, meaning um, you will be able to charge, you know, cell phones or some mobile devices even while the motherboard is on or the computer is turned off. Okay, let's see what else we have. Low ferret cores, uh, low, lower RDS uh, on MOSFET chips, uh, Japanese capacitors, and a lot of good stuff in three way SLI or three way crossfire. Uh, this uh, chipset is not limited. You can run NVIDIA or uh, ATI or AMD cards on this uh, chipset. So you can put four graphics cards up on this motherboard. However, uh, that would re require you running single slot cards or actually taking the, the shroud off a uh, uh, graphics card and water cooling it. And that's the only way you're gonna be able to run high performance uh, cards on this motherboard and have it fit. So we're gonna take it out of its box. It has a candle, and, and <clears throat> I don't know, it's just nice packaging because it is kind of heavy. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to under, take it out of the box and show you how the packaging is. And it comes out pretty easily, and if you take it out, you have a clear cover, so you can see the motherboard. So they, they do this in certain um, box, in certain uh, uh, packages because the customer does want to see it, but it's not packaged like a traditional motherboard where you actually have a static shield or a static bag because you'd have to actually take it out of the static bag to look at what's in the what the product looks like. And if uh, a customer were at a store and they really wanted to see what the product is, just take it out of the box and you know, they can see what it looks like without actually opening it and damaging the product. So what we're doing is we're going to take this out here on top. Oops. Sorry about that. I'm going to this up. <clears throat> and there's a plastic covering. And it smells new, <laughs> right? <laughs> you actually smell the newness of it. Uh, we'll take it out here because there's a lot of other things in package. And it's heavy. I actually feel how heavy it is. And just being the same size, I'm going to discharge some static off my body here. And I'll try to pull it out. Um, to see because there is no static bag with this but it is as you can see packaged very securely and you see the back it's a black PCB this reminds me of Apple Apple uses black PCB motherboard uh, uh, boards here and it's heavy so there and when you feel it in your hand you feel that it's heavy that's because of the two ounces of copper PCB going through it solid caps and our high quality heat sinks now if uh, to you can get a shot of underneath the heat sinks and we actually see how heavy duty is they're actually 
uh, VRMs underneath Northbridge and solid caps underneath of Northbridge here. And the ray goes all the way on top. And this is aluminum cut and it has this really nice seven etched in there and copper or gold uh, accents. And it is all aluminum. So these are all heavy duty aluminum heat sinks here. Four dims for uh, DDR3 up to 20, I believe it's 21, 33 megahertz. And we do have RAM coming for it. Uh, that will run up that speed. Let's see, we have a power button here. We have a clear CMOS button here. And there should be a reset button somewhere on this. Gigabytes premium boards typically do have a reset button. Uh, we'll probably find it later, but uh, let's see. Oh, it's right here. Silly, I can't, I can't even see it. Now the power button, reset button, and then the clear CMOS switch. And typically with the Intel boards, there should be a clear CMOS. Okay, so this isn't like the 1366 uh, chipset where they have a clear CMOS button in the back. Um, some, I'm sure some people may have complained about that. Somebody accidentally pressing the clear CMOS uh, button. If you like that, the MSI board that uh, I have put up recently does have that clear CMOS button on the back. Um, but here we go. We have the SATA 3.0 and uh, the SATA 2 uh, chipsets and uh, headers in the back here. So uh, the the problem has been corrected, so you don't have to worry about any sig signal degradation on the SATA 2.0. We have a debug LED here, and front panel connector, and this is nice because the MSI build that I just built didn't have this. This has a front panel USB, one, two, so two, and we have two actual um, USB 3.0 header here. So this is the first board, besides the MSI board I just built that has real headers for the USB connectors on the motherboard. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? We have a lot of onboard for switches, for fans, even a 1394 Firewire. Uh, I, not many people use it, but there were a lot of high-end um, cameras and things made way back in the day. And people, I'm sure, are still holding on to those. So 1394 for those who still use it. One, two, three, four, PCI Express. Um, but it's actually set up for is what you do is you put a graphics card here, skip this one, put one here, and put a third one here for double decker cards. And what I mean by double decker cards is a. Uh, um, all right, let me get back to the uh, other side and show double decker card. Okay, for example, if you want to crossfire three HIS or 6870s, as you can see, if we put it here, it takes up two slots which means you can only put another graphics card right here skip this one and put it here three if you want to put four you, you can you can put a graphics card in each four of them but you'd have to take off the entire shroud and fan assembly and water cool the GPU and that way you can actually put in four graphics cards otherwise you have to go with a single slot GPU, uh, it's like uh, XFX's 5770, for example. So that's the only way you can actually put physically four uh, graphics cards on this uh, motherboard without any much, without many problems. But uh, let's see, what do we have here? We have the two NEC uh, USB 3.0 uh, controllers here, and then we have on the back a 7.1 sound card. It's a Dolby Digitally certified. <coughs> Four USB 3.0 here, dual LAN. This little one is a 1394 Firewire. So is this. We have two USB here and two E SATA combo. So you can use this E SATA or USB 2.0. And you have another two, two USB 3.0 up here. So pretty nice, pretty nice motherboard and hefty motherboard. But uh, we'll have the. What else uh, do we have in the box? You should actually take a look at. Now that we went through what the product has. Um, and remember, this does not fit 1156 uh, CPU, so don't even try it. No problem. <laughs> yeah, some people um, just might actually try it. So, let's see what else comes in the box. I'll get it. This one. And the accessory pack. It's a pretty nice accessory pack. You have your Dolby Digital Home Theater sticker. And they even say, don't even try the 1156 uh, CPU. It just won't fit. So. And it's on a nice shiny, you know, eye-catching thing, you know, so 
Um, just so people don't make that mistake, you have your user's manual, the driver disc, then you will need that, and this is actually all in English. It's not multilingual. And so that means that this is a very, very thick um, manual all in English. So this is very detailed, actually. Uh, let's see. And this is the multilingual installation book. Wow. I've actually never seen a manual just this thick that's not in a multilingual, so it's all in English. Uh, let's see. The back plating. It's nice to have to identify all your connections. And we see you have two. One right angle, one uh, straight you SATA cable. And these are say these should be SATA uh, 3.0 cables. Um, I don't see any other markings on it, so I'm, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that they're all SATA 3.0 cables, unless these are SATA 2.0 cables. Um, I don't know. There is a difference. Um, a lot of SATA 3.0 cables are actually labeled or they're white. So what we have here in this bag is Okay, what we have here is, well actually, since this will be built soon, and uh, we, why don't we open it up, because it's smoked. This is actually smoked, so some people might not be able to see what actually comes with it. And so we're gonna open it just to take a look. This is an, a SATA power uh, uh, converter. This is going to connect into any uh, four pin Molex. And then you can connect two uh, SATA devices for power and let's see what this is because I'm curious to see if they, if they actually care or Gigabyte actually put in SATA 2 cables or SATA 3 um, it says serial ATA and there's no particular marking so serial ATA I'm t thinking it's going to be SATA uh, 2.0 .0, or SATA 2 now I'm going to go ahead and open up these just to make sure I'm sure a lot of people are wondering because I'm wondering about that. And this also says just serial, you know, ATA. So I'm gonna have to. Oh, okay. We do have marking on the cable. We do have marking in the cable, which is good because you want to make sure. To can you zoom in on that? It says SATA or six gigabit per second or three gigabit per second. So these are SATA three cables. And let's see what the cables I just opened up. What they say. This is the cables that were in the smoked uh, bag. And this does not say SATA, it does not give a differentiation, say, or six or three. So these, I'm gonna take it, are SATA two cables. So it's important not to get them mixed up and I'm gonna tag them later. So just as I thought, this uh, the packaging with this here, and that would make sense, this is SATA two. And what you have here is, two eSATA ports here, but a power port. So, I mean, a lot of people that don't open this, and since this is actually for a real build, uh, I don't actually make videos of things. Nobody sends me things yet, so if Gigabyte is hearing, you can always send me things to review. <laughs> but this is an actual real build. So we have eSATA, two eSATA leads, and the power, and the power goes to this. So this will actually be something that we can connect later. If your four pin, Connected here, this is going to be external here. So these are two power, uh, say the power external leads here. And then you can always connect it. Um, <coughs> and then you can always connect it right into, like, you know, the eSATA connector here. So let's see what do we have. We have one SLI bridge. So you say if you just want to connect two video, um, video cards. And this is important. This is, if you ever lose one of these, you have to order it right from Gigabyte. We're gonna open it up anyway just to show you <clears throat> and this is a really tight fit so you actually have to do it perfectly this is a three-way SLI bridge from Gigabyte and now that's if we put it here you can see where it's going to connect you see a connector here skip this connector here and connector here and very very tight it's perfect you have to actually connect all of them perfectly or the third card won't read uh, otherwise you do uh, your, you know, your dual card, which you can, you know, put like here, and it's gonna bend up a little bit, but for the SLI bridge. 
Uh, I don't know why they give. So apparently, they, the, there's a preference for uh, for uh, Nvidia cards because they do give you uh, SLI and and SLI bridges, but no Crossfire bridges. So you know that's something that perhaps I don't know if uh, Nvidia has worked out with uh, various uh, builds or motherboard constructors, but you know. Uh, you can order Crossfire Bridges or really uh, good companies like um, XFX or you know HIS or some other companies in Vision Tech. They'll send you Crossfire Bridges if you request it. So don't quote me on that. But that's what I've heard. So uh, if not, they should. But thanks for watching, and uh, we'll get this build done and do a final video. And if you have any questions or comments, just put them at the bottom of the video. Thanks. Okay.